way he fought back in this moto, he wants this, to defend this championship. He is serious about it, and I have no doubts that he can. James Stewart, one more time through the mud and over the finish line for his second straight win. The first for Australia, the first this year for YZ 250F, and he is your new points leader as he goes across the checkered flag. David, this guy's about to ride into the AMA record books for the first time, his first professional win, and it could not come at a better time for him. Since that fourth round, James Bubba Stewart has emerged as the man in the 125 class, winning all but two motos in the last five nationals. Now Bubba will attempt to tie an AMA record that has stood for five years. Ricky Carmichael's rookie record of eight national wins back in 1997. James Stewart goes for number eight next. Hello everyone and welcome to Millville, Minnesota for the 10th round of the 2002 AMA Chevy Trucks U.S. Motocross Championships. It is an absolutely perfect day in Minnesota for 125cc motocross racing. James Stewart about to go after the first of Ricky Carmichael's professional records. I'm your host, Davey Coons. Joining me is former champion David Bailey. And down in the pits will be Robbie Floyd. Over the years, we've had some first-time winners here at Millville, like Mike LaRocco and Nick Way, but today we might see an old veteran come to the front of the pack. Let's go down to Robbie Floyd. Thanks, guys. I'm here with Larry Ward, just coming off a moto win at Washougal. Uh, you're starting to get the feel of it again. Yeah, yeah. We struggled a little bit with some setup and then uh, had some mechanical difficulties, but Yoshimura, DGY, they have this Yamaha running great, and uh, I'm having a lot of fun here. Moto Triple X is treating me well and having a lot of fun. Let's talk about this was a side of your very first uh, national a long, long time ago, but you are having more fun. You got a new coach. Everything seems to be going your way. Yeah, you know, you do it for 16, 17 years. You kind of got to find new stuff to make it, keep it interesting, and uh, the new coach is, is nice. Stayed out here at the track last night and uh, looking forward to having the next couple of years racing. Loamy dirt out there, similar to Washougal and Ways. Uh, how do you feel? Um, it's it's more it's closer to uh, Redbud, and Redbud's been real good to me on the force for the last couple of years. So I felt good in practice. Of course, uh, you know there's always three or four guys that are that are going to give me problems, but just be consistent, ride the best I can both motos. Well, he likes the track. Let's take a look at it. David Bailey with our track map. Now, the first time I ever saw Millville, I was so stoked. I couldn't wait to get out there and ride on the track. And each year since then, that's since 1983, this place has become more and more spectacular. The trees are cleared. It's better for spectators. It's just in a nice valley where they ride through hard packs, and then they get into sand. Off the start, they get into the first really tough section on the track, the sand whoop. Although this year they're more like sand doubles. They made them so big, they haven't really turned into a whoop section. But I like the fact that they change the track a little each year, just to give the riders something new. One of the riders we've been looking out for today is Brandon Jespin of Team Suzuki. He's been on a great roll. Check it out. Grant Langston, last year's Millville winner, finally back in action after that knee injury. However, it's all about James Stewart. He has a massive points lead over Jessman in the standings, and the last month has been just quite frankly brilliant for this young rider. David, it's all working for James Stewart. It sure is, and you know, during the Supercross season when he had so much inconsistency, we thought he might bring some of this to the outdoors, but he's proved, especially with this ride here in Redbud, coming from dead last in the first turn crash. He actually got run over. The bike was a little bit bent, and he still came through the pack to get second and win the overall. Amazing. And when he went to Kenworth, these, we finally got a chance to see him race against Yamaha Troy's Chad Reed, but before it even started, it ended in a corner. This was pretty funny, too, because look at Chad. He's like, now nah, I'll get out of your way when I'm good and ready. Finally, the pack came up, and Stewart was like, hey, I got to get out of here. And then Reed and Stewart had another run in, and this one was more of a mental battle at Unadilla. Stewart with the lead slows down and lets Reed by. Never seen anything like it. This is Bob Hanna-like, and, and what better place to do it than at Unadilla? But he just lets him by and goes, all right, let's see what you got. And it wasn't enough. Right back by him, and I said at the time that if... If that was, in fact, what he was trying to accomplish there, we would never beat him again. Well, since then, James Stewart has been thinking about the championship, and we asked him if the points lead was making the pressure more or less than how it was affecting his strategy. 
now it makes it easier because I know, you know, I don't want to do a Dallas again where I was out front and I don't, I don't got to take all the chances anymore. So it's like if I'm in fourth and it's, it's taking a chance for me to catch third, it's not worth it because I got a good points lead. Well, here at Millville, Stewart has an 84-point lead on Brandon Jessman. Reed is almost 100 back. In fact, he's almost out of title contention. Ernesto Fonseca, 107 back. And then Danny Smith rounds out the top five. Taking a look at the Suzuki starting lineup, of course, you have Stewart, Jessman, Reed, Fonseca, and Smith at the top of the board. Keep an eye on Matt Walker. The post-circuit rider's been putting in some good rides. Same with his teammate, Shea Bentley, a little further down. Billy Lanovich had the brilliant ride at Washougal. Rounding out the field are privateers like Paul Varaka and Jason McCormick. Now, the riders are on the start. You're looking over the shoulders of Chad Reed on the YZ250F and Brandon Jessamet, third and second, respectively, in the point standings. This is a very long start stretch, so you got to think that it's going to benefit Reed, and also it is a dirt start. The card is sideways. They are getting ready to blast off, and round 10 is underway, and there they go up the stretch already. Danny Smith gets pinched off, and it looks like Kelly Smith, the privateer on the YZ 250F, out front. Brock Sellers is right there. Randy Velotti, a privateer in third. Good start for the independent riders, and they are getting ready to head into the sand whoops. Where is Stewart? Stewart's right there to the edge of the racetrack. Just comes over the jump right with Reed. He's got him in contact. Now they go into the whoops. This is what David was talking about. They're more like doubles this year. They don't pound through. You catch a glimpse of the riders. A clean start for just about everyone. Smith out front. Reed slices in the second. And now coming back through the whoops, they'll pound out through there. Reed goes into the lead. And Stewart comes right behind him over the berm. Smith pushes him out. But Stewart knows he's got to get with Reed right away. Uh, he knows that that was a great example of how important it was to him because he took a big chance right there, almost going off the racetrack, scrubbing right there to try to stay low. He does not want to have a privateer between himself and Chad Reed right now. Sweeps to the outside, stuffs it into that berm, and now we've got the battle again. Reed in first, Stewart in second. Will they do a repeat of what we saw at Unit Dillon? Right away, Stewart wide open down the hill, takes the lead. That's the kind of thing he's been doing to Chad Reed all summer long, David. Yeah, it's pretty hard for me not to talk very favorably about what this kid's about. I mean, that's just unbelievable to come from about fifth or sixth through the sand boot to lead. It's only a half a lap old, and he's already to the front and starting to open up a gap on Reed. And what's that do to your head? I mean, if I was Reed right now, start to feel like, well, I'm not as good as this guy. I'll just see how close I can stay. This is the first visit for James Stewart as far as being a rider. Last year, he was there watching, and he was watching these sand groups. Well, check this out. He's on the way back. You are able to get up on the top and ride more like boots. With a little bit of timing right there, but then he just gets on the top like they do in Supercross, and Stewart's right behind him, doubles into the corner, lays it in on Smith. Smith says, I don't think so. Almost puts him off the track. Now, this was the pass for the lead coming off the ski jump. Well, Stewart came out of the corner and just laid the bike over. Now, when you lay the bike over at the takeoff point, the suspension can't rebound up. So he didn't get the height, got the power to the ground, and Reed really looked like he should have done something a little different there. Look at the size of the lead. They have picked up over third place. Brock Sellers, Sellers all alone. And then you go back to fourth, and it's the Frenchman, Eric Sorby. Smith has dropped all the way back to fifth. And then it looks like it's the factory Honda Fonseca. Smith is slowing down. Bad luck all year long for Kelly Smith. And one more time, the 3D Racing Yamaha off to the side of the track. This kid can't buy a break. That's too bad, right when he gets a good start, too. This yeah. is the battle, though. Stewart jumping through the whoops. He is out front, and the pack is coming. It's Stewart, Reed, Sellers, and Sorby at Millville. We will be back in a moment. Champions ride Hondas. Now and in the future.
Honda XRs. They're a head start. Speedboat's presentation of AMA Motocross is brought to you by Suzuki, maker of innovative motorcycles and all-terrain vehicles. And by Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, and scooters. Honda, performance first. Back to the front of the pack while we were away, Chad Reed was able to catch James Stewart and make a repass for the lead. Reed now in the number one position, series points leader, James Stewart back in second, and that is a big development, David Bailey, after what happened in Unadilla. Well, if I was Reed, I would just tell everyone I did it on purpose. You know, just start that rumor. Why not? <laughs> he's got he's got James back there. It's not over yet. James is still just checking things out, but it's rare to see James have a problem. Oh, he almost... Wow, Stuart, as soon as you said that, he almost went out there and cleared out some mechanics. But you're right, Stuart hasn't made a lot of mistakes this year. And now we take a look at Kelly Smith on his way back to the pits. Of course, Kelly had our whole shot, and we saw him come to a stop earlier in the race. Just past the mechanics area. You can tell right there, he just sits on the bike. It's not running. He's looking down like, hmm, I wonder what that could be. And you know what? As far as four strokes go, you got me. I don't know what the heck is going on, but it's fairly convenient. The mechanics area is only about 50 feet away. And speaking of the mechanics area, here's where you see Stewart pop out of the berm. Right after the finish line, he almost takes out an entire group of 125 national class mechanics. Well, you can see his front wheel did a little twitch, but he wasn't about to back off, but he's trying to stay with Chad Reed. I don't think he's letting him go on purpose. Well, we're back to the section. Now, this is where Reed made that pass while we were away through the whoops. You see Stewart pounding through behind him, and right there, Reed messed his rhythm up, and Stewart gets right up on him again. This is good. Finally, we're getting to see these guys battle for a little bit. Usually, it's over as quick as it started. A track like this, you might think they would favor Stewart. The way the soil is kind of like down in Florida, but the same goes for Australia. And also, Chad Reed last year won the Belgian Grand Prix in the 250 class in the sand. Oh, look at Stewart. Just drag the handlebar through that outside berm. You can hear the people. A little inside out for the second time in this moto. He makes the pass on the ski jump and pushes Reed out. Well, kids, you can try the scrub and stay low thing at home, but don't try it that much. He just about drug the handlebar off that jump as well, and Reed's got to be thinking, man, what do I have to change in that corner to hold this kid off? David, what have these two guys brought to this class? I mean, if it were just James Stewart or just Chad Reed, we would have the biggest runaway of all time. Well, you know, I think you can just watch Stewart and see what he's brought to it, besides being the first really successful African-American. And then when you look at Chad Reed, you realize, okay, that the international flavor is, in fact, here to stay. Now, watch this scrub right there. Look, he just lays the bike all the way over. A little bit of villain in there, wasn't it? Yeah, a lot. He, you know, Billiman just has fun on his bike. Yeah, sure, he can hold still and get things accomplished, but he likes to get into it a little bit more and move around. And I think that's some of the soul you see coming out of Stewart. And you can hear the fans cheering here at John and Greta Martin Spring Creek Motocross Track. They are seeing the battle we've been waiting for for most of the year. James Stewart versus Chad Reed. A perfect afternoon, a record crowd of more than 18,000 fans, and we're not even halfway through the first moto. Uh, I just love what I'm seeing so far. These guys are they're going right after each other, and I thought when Stewart got around that time, he was going to pull away from Reed, but Reed is stuck with him here, and they're both just monorailing all these berms out here. It's really fun to watch. Down into the heart of the Millville track, Stewart leading Reed, and if you're wondering about our third place rider, it's Red Bull KTM's Brock Sellers, and further back, Grant Langston, the winner of this race last year, finally back in action after just a terrible summer of injuries. In fact, Robbie Floyd is down in the pits. He's with his mechanic and uncle, Andrew Langston. How pleased are you with Grant's performance so far? Uh, 
difficult to say. This morning he was looking really good in the practice sessions. Um, I thought he was going to be a little bit faster than what he was. He didn't get the start that uh, he thought he was going to get or we, we hoped to get. And he's uh, been battling through to get through the pack, but uh, he's not coming uh, forward as fast as I thought he would. He rode right light on the board. Do you think maybe he's pushing a little too hard? Not really. He just seems to be uh, carrying, a, carrying himself through the turns into the rough stuff, and uh, he should be sweeping underneath the rough stuff. And, uh, just helping the bike along. So Langston holding down sixth in his first race since mid-May. We will be back to Millville shortly. Stewart and Reed battling out for first, and then it's a long way back to Brock Sellers. Heading into the 1999 Spring Creek 125 National in Millville, Minnesota, defending series champion Ricky Carmichael was the overwhelming favorite. The Kawasaki Mountain Carmichael had won seven of the first five nationals and was well out front in the points. However, anything can happen in motocross racing, and RC's luck ran out with a first lap crash in Minnesota. That opened the door for a split-fire pro-circuit teammate, Nick Way, to earn his first ever AMA National Moto win. In the second moto, Carmichael came out swinging, taking the lead early in the race and effectively clearing out. With first moto contenders Talon Bolin, Stefan Rancana, and rookie Brandon Jessman all having their problems, Way was able to put himself in the winner's circle with a steady fifth place finish, earning his one and only first place trophy in AMA national competition. There you see Nick Way watching the 125 national class. Nick, of course, one of the leaders of the Moto Triple X privateer team in the 250 class. And what he's seen is James Stewart and Chad Reed. They are literally turning this into a race of their own. And Reed is really starting to put the pressure on Stewart. Great. A little further back, you might be wondering where Larry Ward and Brandon Jessman are. Jessman crashed while holding seven. And Larry Ward just not getting the starts. They were the two riders that beat Stewart in the first moto in our last race in Washougal. There you see Jeremy Albrecht, Stewart's mechanic. And David, right now, he's got to be thinking, is James playing with him, or is this as fast as James can go? Well, he's really got to be wondering, like the rest of us, because James has done some pretty crazy things out there on the racetrack this year, really unpredictable even for his mechanic. And it looks to me like he's riding pretty hard right now. I thought when he got around him the second time, he was going to check out, but he's been making mistakes, like that one right there. And right there, that mistake cost him the lead. He punched it out of that corner spun the back wheel and Reed went right around him and again coming down a hill here comes Stewart this time on the outside and he cannot make the pass stick well it doesn't surprise me to see Stewart fighting that's just the way he rides you know he's gonna fight but it surprised me a little bit to see Reed fighting back like this when I was saying in that opening lap about Reed being mentally beaten that is not the case here he's going right back after him and what a great track for it. Reed, of course, a good sand specialist. Stewart just wasn't in that berm. He would have been out of about a foot and a half to his left. His rear wheel would have slid into the berm, just like Reed, and he would have hooked back up. It messed him up, and Reed was all over it. Do you think Stewart lit a fire under Reed with the Unadilla deal? Absolutely. And they've had enough time off. They've had a few weeks before this race, a sand track, which Reed is a sand specialist as well. Remember Daytona? He flew there. I think he thought about it a lot. He goes, you know what? Losing is, I don't like it. I'm not, I don't want to lose anymore. I don't want to finish the season losing because you know what? 03 really begins now. And if he lets Stewart get this kind of momentum and just push him around like this, that doesn't help him. It'll, affect, it'll affect him when he goes to the 250 class because there he's got Carmichael waiting for him. You bet. This is great practice for him right now to just step it up. Now, we should go back down the mechanics area. Robbie Floyd is with Jeremy Albrecht. David, I know we had a little drama between Reed and Bubba this time, but I don't think Bubba let him by again on purpose. No, I don't think he's messed with him. It looks like, you know, Reed's riding a really good race, and, you know, Bubba's trying hard as well. And the main thing is just to keep his cool, and, you know, it looks like every time he tries a different line, he makes a mistake and loses a little time. So, you know, tracks a little one line. He's just got to be smart, basically. He's in it for the championship. We saw what happened to the Dallas Supercross, kind of a, a poor decision. Are you trying to tell him some of the bid for it to stay bogus? Yeah, you know, we talked a lot about that. He learned a lot from that race, and, you know, he's taking his time and he said he, 
he won't ever do that again. So that's part of it, you know, live and learn. David, no sooner he say that, did you see how far Stewart jumped off that ski jump? No scrub at speed there. Now he's trying as hard as he can right now. And you know, I, I can't see anything that really doesn't look right about him. You know, and of course, this is a surprise. It's like, he's been winning so much that you look at what's happening with Stewart getting beat right now, you think, what's wrong? I can't see that anything's wrong. It's just that Reed wants to win this moto right now. Now, a little further back, you see Shane Fess. He's riding in 10th, and right there, down goes Travis Preston, I think. No, that's Christopher Gosler of the Factory Connection Team. Sorry, but you saw Larry Ward and Brandon Jessman in there with them. A lot of people thought they'd be up there, but they're having the problems just like this. Well, that's classic Gosler. This kid is so aggressive, and he, sometimes he gets a little bit ahead of himself right now. He needed to kind of cool it. He wasn't going anywhere. Larry Ward was right in front of him and he just cast it right into his back wheel. We have gotten used to seeing Brandon Jessamine up on the podium in almost every moto this summer. Just not a good start here at Millville. And then he had that early crash we mentioned. You thought that he would do a lot better on a sand track. We saw him almost win that first moto at Southwood with Danny Smith. But down in the mechanics area, Robbie Floyd is caught up with Jessamine's mechanic, James Floyd. James, what signals do you give him with him out there? I know he had some problems maybe with cramping. Maybe that's the case? Well, he's moving up and he went down. Now he's got to come back and pass everybody again. I'm just trying to egg him on and tell him to be really aggressive. There's no time to wait. There you see Brock Sellers, the third place rider. Sellers showing a lot more staying power than he's shown earlier as he gets over his Epstein bar sickness. And there you see Fonseca, the factory Honda rider, riding in fourth. Good job by Seller to rebound from that Epstein bar. That's, that's a tough one. You know, because it's not like when you take time off, you're getting fresh and, and you're going to come back ready. You're coming back with, you're not supposed to do anything with Epstein bar. So you had to start from scratch. And what a great way to come back from that. Well, back to the front of the pack, Chad Reed has opened a very sizable lead over James Stewart. And down the pits, Robbie Boyd is with his mechanic, David Dodd. Unstoppable out there. He's just motoring. He's just he's in his groove today. He was fast all day, fast yesterday, and he's just riding smart. Fast is one thing, but uh, what is he doing? It making him so fast. Uh, he's just mentally strong. He wants it. He wants to show that he can win, especially against Bubba. Especially against Bubba. Well, David, there's that Unadilla incident again, and that time you heard it from his mechanic, Davey Dye. Yeah, he just jumped right back on that question from Robbie, saying, yeah, especially against Bubba. And, you know, so far, so good. He's got to come back and back it up again in the second moto, but from what I've seen so far, this is a great track for me, and everything seems to be clicking for him. It's hard to say what this will mean in the series because Stewart has such a big points lead. Right now, and more or less, Chad Reed's racing for honor and respect. He is, and he's getting it right now. Yeah, you know, even after Unadillo, when he got beat that way, he was asked about it. He goes, you know, I, I just forgot about the championship. I'm just thinking about races now. Now, back to the battle for third. This is Sellers and Fonseca. Again, they were a long ways behind Stewart, who seems to be in full-on cruise control in second place. Down the hill, this is where Stewart's able to pass him twice, and Fonseca can't make the pass. He's close enough, though. Where they came off that jump, they were so close. Looked like, a, it looked like Fonseca went way too wide right there, but the ruts are getting so deep, they actually turned out to be an okay line. At least he didn't follow. Up around the tree turns, Sellers trying to hold on to a podium finish here at Millville. He's had a difficult summer, just like some other riders in the 125 class. Right now, though, it's Reed in complete control out front. Get a quick look at Josh Hansen, just coming with the Red Lynch ring, so Rod the Yamaha Troy next year, trying to get his first national point here in Minnesota. But there's the man of the hour, Chad Reed, the Yamaha Troy mechanics out there, giving the go-ahead, letting the lap riders know to get out of the way. Chad Reed out front. He has defeated James Stewart in a very, very good battle. He's happy about it. He should be. He's had plenty of time to think about how lousy it feels to get beat. And it's gonna, you know, I don't think he likes being beat by Jessamine either. So it was a good day here and the, with Jessamine struggling with the start and the crash to make it second overall back in the points. And if he does lose to Stewart, well, at least he just loses to Stewart, not Stewart and Jessamine. One more 
more downhill to go. Then he'll make a right-hand corner over the tunnel jump right there. And then Chad Reed will ride across the checkered flag. The first rider to beat James Stewart straight up. And who knows how long. There it is. The checkered flag comes out for the Australian. When we come back, we will talk to the winner. Welcome back to U.S. Motocross. We have seen an upset of sorts here in the first moto at Millville. Chad Reed has beaten James Stewart, and Robbie Floyd is with Bubba now. Bubba, great ride out there, but you look very disappointed with second. I know that's not how you wanted to finish it. No, nah, definitely not. I mean, I don't come out here to get second. You know, you know Chad straight up beat me today, and, uh, you know, I just still really tight, but, you know, there's no excuses. He rode an awesome race. I was, thought I was on him for a while, and then, you know, I messed up in the whoops, and I ran off the track right there and lost up my momentum. But, you know, just got to come back strong for the second round. What's your problem with the whoops out there? I mean, they're hard for everybody, but what were you having difficulties with? Nah, I don't know. Just, you know, trying to push it. And getting roosted by him, I couldn't see anything. I kept messing up in the corners, but no excuses. I got beat. You got back out in front. How come you weren't able to get by him that second time? Uh, you know, like I said, it was, it was hard. That four show roof eating me up and couldn't really see. And then, like I said, I screwed up in the whoops and you know, ran out the track. And, uh, I don't know. Good ride. Well, a visibly upset James Stewart at finishing second in that moto, but he did beat Brock Sellers, Ernesto Fonseca, and Eric Sorby. Grant Langston was able to hold on for sixth, and Brandon Jessamine was able to move up to eighth after that fall. Now let's go back to Robbie. He's with our winner, Chad Reed. Chad, looked like everything happened well for you out there. Bubba even has some problems, but you pulled away towards the end. You know, problems are just things that uh, go along with motocross. You know, I've had my fair share of problems, and, you know, I'm just glad to get out there and get a good start and, uh, you know, just do a good motor. We haven't raced all year, and, it's, you know, it was a lot of fun. I don't know what happened to him. Personally, I don't really... You said you flat out beat him out there, but you were wanting to prove a point, I think. You know, there's you know, there's a lot of things that a lot of people have been saying, and, uh, you know, when, you, when you, if anyone's ever had a dislocated shoulder, you know, they know the pain and, and the, you know, the rehab that it takes to get strong again, and, you know... Finally, I feel like I'm getting strong again, and, uh, you know, I'm real happy, you know. I just want to go and just uh, do that again, you know. I had those a lot of fun to do that, and, and just uh, get good starts is the main thing. I know you're wanting to win the overall, but is your objective in your mind to prove a point to everyone? Yeah, po proving points is for everyone else, you know. I just want to go and do it for myself, you know. There's nothing better than winning races. It's the best fun in the world. And, you know, I just want to thank a lot of people that stuck by me and, uh, you know, part-time leader and Jeff Fox and Thor is just, you know, I just signed a three-year deal and really happy to do that. And, you know, Mahan, Yamaha Troy, Boost Mobiles, Smith Goggles, Donald Tires, everybody's just working really, really hard and we've got three races to go and I just want to do the best I can. Well, you can hear the satisfaction there in his voice and also some satisfaction for Jackie Hudson who's able to win her first moto ever in the WML here in Millville, Minnesota. The racing took place on Saturday. And also you see Jessica Patterson right behind her. Patterson would be the one to come back in the second moto and take the championship. This on top of her recent win at the Red Lens in the AMA Amateur National Motocross Championship for women. Jessica Patterson, the team green rider, re-establishing herself as the fastest woman on planet Earth right now in motocross racing. And now time for a behind-the-scenes look at the Millville National with this week's Racer X Pit Pass. Another look outside the lines with J-Bone's annual surfer cross.
got something a little different for you guys. It's called Surfer Cross, not Super Cross, Surfer Cross. The best surfers and best moto guys in the world getting together to do battle. It's a team event. They draw out of a hat. You got to have one surfer and one moto guy on a team, and they switch off on the riding, and everybody's got to surf. It's hilarious. It's a lot of fun. So let's check out the action. If you could pick your optimum partner, who would it be? Sonny. Rick Johnson. When they're picking, you're, you're actually you know, hoping you get teamed up with a, with a good partner and um, come out with a trophy at the end. Sorry, Davey. See, what's he know? He doesn't know. It's my first time. You know, I've never been out to a track, never seen guys race before. I haven't rode a motorcycle in a long time, so this is a lot of fun, I'm having a blast. First time really on a, on a motorbike on the course, and uh, I'm just glad I'm in one piece. <laughs> Got a heat stroke, not enough aspirin. Yeah, it looks uh, a lot more intense in real life than it does on TV, that's for sure. Especially when they're flying 40 feet above your head. <laughs> You know, we have a weekend off, you really don't want to have all the pressure. Just to have the surf guys go first and then only have to do two laps and change up, it's, it's a lot of fun. Well, Garth and uh, Michael Byrne are looking pretty good. Uh, Chad Reed ended up with Ryan Rossin, so Ryan Rossin's a really good surfer. They got first and second in the, in the moto, so I, I would say they're going to be pretty hard to beat tomorrow. You nervous, Garrett? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's going to be something totally different. I've never been judged before on a surfboard. I'm bad. I'm, I'm way down there. <laughs> I stand up, but uh, I'll just see tomorrow. I'm going to put a handstand. My hometown is a beach town, so I guess uh, everyone thinks that I'm going to be good, but I suck. <laughs> I thought, man, it'd be really cool if Sonny, you know, Sonny and I were teammates. When he went first, I thought, man, there's no way it's going to happen. And when he drew my name, and I was like a kid in a candy store. How's RJ surfing? RJ surfing great. Ricky's been surfing for a while, so I'm, I'm pretty stoked with the partner I got. We're uh, second overall right now, so... Uh... I don't even know how the other guys surf, like, you know, the guys I need to uh, race against or whatever, but I don't know. We'll just see. I'll just try doing my best. Pretty good, actually, when I first started, but then after I took a few falls, I'm, I'm a little more tentative now, so I don't know. I'm definitely a lot better on a dirt bike. that it's pretty easy to tell who surfs full-time and who rides motocross full-time but we are back to Millville Minnesota for the Spring Creek Motocross Park getting ready for the start of the second 125 moto let's go down to Robbie Floyd at the starting gate he's got a report on James Stewart there's still a chance that James Bubba Stewart can take his first professional championship here in Millville to do so he has to finish at least 10 points ahead of Chad Reed and 12 points ahead of Brandon Jessman after this moto now I talked to Jay Bone, his mechanic, just a moment ago, and he said he made some day changes between first and second moto. One, he took a spacer out of the head fire, so it's going to give him a little bit more top end. Also, front tire change. He went to more of a hard back compound. He was having a hard time washing out. 
out in some of those turns. He said it dried up a lot more out there. Now, you notice Bubba is right next to Buddy Antonez, and the Bud Man has known to get a hole shot once or twice this season. Well, we've seen Stewart rebound from losses in the first part of a fourth. The DNF at Southwick, the straight-up defeat in Red Bud after he crashed. Can he do it again? Taking the guard, Suzuki starting line, presented by Suzuki. All of the principals in this race, and don't count out Tucker Hibbert. He is a professional snow cross racer. Comes out for a few nationals here. Also keeping out for Ryan Mills, who just graduated from the professional ranks after a championship at Loretta Lynn's. Mills getting help from Factory Connection. Now the car is sideways. The second moto from Spring Creek Motocross Park getting ready to come right at you. There they come up the long straightaway and into the first turn. It looks like Stewart on the inside. James Stewart comes out firing two KTMs right behind him. That is Langston and Sellards. And James Stewart quickly reasserting himself. Well, he started a little bit more to the inside so he could control everyone to the inside of him. He had less guys in there to foul up his first turn. He had more top end and he proved it. He's got the most power going to the starting line. With that front tire hooking up better on the hard pack stuff, Reed better be on his game this time to get close right now because Stewart has the potential to check out. Reed is fifth right now. Langston runs second. Matt Walker is third. Brock Sellers fourth. And then Chad Reed, you can see the track has definitely gotten rougher as Stewart starts into the heart of the track, up the hills, gets it a little sideways there, and he is going to try and gap these guys right away. We've seen it time and again. And there you catch a glimpse of Reed. He is working on Matt Walker for third. I like the fact that Stewart, I mean, I, I think it's great that he was all disappointed. He's actually trying to keep from laughing, David, when I was watching him do that. But, you know, he just said, hey, no excuses. Uh, Reed rode better. He flat out beat me. But I know that he made these changes, and, and with the anger that he had, he should be able to put that to use and really smoke these guys. But I would like to see Reed get in there and battle. But not only did Stewart change his front tire and change his pipe, he also changed colors. Looks like he's running a white and red Fox Racing Ensemble there. You know, the Fox guys, they tell me that if they don't follow him around and make sure he wears what they have laid out, He'll wear whatever, and he'll wear red pants, a yellow chest protector, orange gloves, and they kind of like him to match, you know? They got a lot of a lot of colors and things he can wear if they like him to wear it together. Certainly not as superstitious as his teammate Ricky Carmichael on Fox Racing. He wears orange exclusively. Now you're watching Matt Walker. Right now he's holding on to third place. There you see the first photo winner, Reed, behind him. The top of the Brock Sellers comes along as the fifth place rider. Back up in front. In fact, there is Stewart. There is Langston. Very impressive for being off all summer. And you know, talking that Ryan Hughes has been riding with Langston before this race. Langston only rode about four times, and two of those times didn't really go that well, so they didn't expect much out of him here today. When we come back, can Langston catch James Stewart? We will be back to Millville in a moment. Hi, I'm Ron Wood with this week's Honda Tech Tip. Even though it's the middle of summer, today we're going to talk about how to prepare your bike for a mud race. And the most important thing you can have is a good old roll of duct tape. What you want to do with that tape is, underneath your seat, make yourself a nice little channel here to roll that water off the back, because there will be water that comes in, even though you're, you're, you hope it doesn't. The same with the top of the filter. You want to cover it to the very edge, to where if the water does come off it, it goes past the filter, not landing right on top of it. The other thing is you don't want to put a lot of foam or anything in the bottom of the air box. Because if that water does get in there, no matter what, and it will, no matter how hard you seal it, you don't want it to stay in there. You want it to be able to drain out the bottom. It's very important that it does just get, get away from that filter as soon as possible. I'm Ron Wood with this week's Honda Tech Tip. second that's grant langston fresh off a summer vacation healing himself up and he is doing a fantastic job of leading pro circuits matt walker and first motor winner chad reed but for all intents and purposes james stewart has checked out he is 14 almost 15 seconds ahead of the battle for second a little further back you see brock sellers and ernesto fonseca picking up where they ended in the first moto battling again only this time it is for fifth and sixth 
these guys have been pretty much together the whole race. Nobody really able to break free or get any kind of an edge on anybody. Right there you see Walker trying to get a wheel inside of Langston, but unable to do so. And now Reed comes along the outside right when Walker messed up his entry to the exit, I should say, of the Millville Whoops. Reed is right there to capitalize, and now he's all over Grant Langston. I'm impressed Langston has been able to hold these guys up all this, off all this time. It's so hard not to race. His teammate Lanovich found out what it was like to go to Washougal. That was his first national. A lot of people forget that that was only Billy Lanovich's first national. This being his second. And it took him a little while to get into the racing shape. The second moto after a good first moto, he was totally tired. And that's why he finished outside the top ten. Langston here in the second moto, still holding off the heavy hitters of this 125 class. Reed with the pitch and timing around that outside. Drops the front wheel in the right. Bumps. Jumps over the right one, hops out the last two, and now Langston better realize who's behind him now. Because that'll change him. And Reed will want to get by as soon as he can if he's going to have any chance of catching Stewart and making it a perfect day here in Minnesota. Off the ski jump, Reed is now on the back fender of Langston as they work their way back into the wood section of the track. That's Walker, the fourth place rider. But Langston still holding off Chad Reed. Reed's going to have a battle again this moto, but not for the lead. Reed trying to find a way around the former world champion Grant Langston's KTM. He said he's got Walker right behind him, the three of them battling for second place here in the closing stages in the second moto. Here you see Walker trying to get himself another podium finish. He's been impressive all year, but not very consistent. But this rider, James Stewart, Impressive and consistent, David. Oh, he's looking good. But he's in danger of just getting in cruise control out front. You know, you, you got these three guys in the back racing hard against each other. And if, you, if one of these guys breaks free, they could close the gap on Stewart, who's out there just sort of cruising right now. Oh, and wait a second. That is Langston. Grant Langston has gone down. He looks like he's slow getting up, maybe a little hurt. You see him struggling to get to his feet. It sounds like his bike is stuck wide open. You see one of the riders' mechanics going out to try and stop that bike. You see it digging sand. Obviously, he's good enough to try and get his bike up. But Grant Langston just threw away a great ride here at Millville. That's too bad. That's a high-speed section. They come out of the start. They go right into the stand. And watch Langston. He's the second rider in line right there. He'll lay it into the inside burn. Hits a breaking bump, just knifes it. Pitches him off right over the front end. And he's lucky Reed was able to get away from him that quick. Now that's one of those weird crashes. You just sort of like, one second everything's fine, and the next second you're like, what happened? Wake up with a crowd of people standing on As we take a look at the Donnie Schmidt tribute here at Millville, Chad Reed is in second. Can he catch James Stewart? We'll be right back. of AMA Motocross is brought to you by Honda. The company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, and scooters. Honda, performance first. And by Suzuki, maker of innovative motorcycles and all-terrain vehicles. Well, any trip to Millville means the Millville Whoop Monster. And we talked to him earlier about why he does this. I respect the racers, and I just try to cheer them all on, even if they're fighting for last place. And, I mean, the more I can do to help them out, to stay motivated. And I just get a little extreme, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Got himself a new noise maker there in that chainsaw, too. And here's why the Millville Whoops are so notorious. Check it out. As soon as you get through them, you get in the corner, and there you see Kevin Johnson, Damon up in Larry Ward fall over the easiest part of the whoop section and even that's a pretty tough place. They're so tired after going through the first section of them and then you come around and you got to go through a bunch more on the way out. They're actually tougher because you can't time them as easily. Larry Ward just gets caught going on. What was I thinking? Huffman and Ward have been here many, many times and still don't have a master. Well, I guess Kevin Johnson caused that. But yeah, but that's why you don't follow. 
Now back to the front of the pack, James Stewart getting a signal from one of the Kawasaki Chevy trucks mechanics. He is out front and back in control after that first moto defeat. And like you said, David, he almost, he's on cruise control and he almost threw it away right there. Yeah, he is cruising right now. I mean, he rode his tail off to get that big lead and now he's just riding along, enjoying the beautiful day they have here in Millville. The last time I was there in 86, it rained so hard, the whole track was muddy. We had a sunny day, but the conditions were nothing like they are here. And there he gets the checkered flag, and that will give him eight 125 national wins, and this is rookie year. He ties Ricky Carmichael's record for the second time, because he's already beaten his Loretta Lynn's amateur record, James Stewart takes the overall win. Chad Reed will end up second with Brock Sellard's third. Here's Robbie. Well, congratulations goes to James Bubba Stewart. You tied Ricky Carmichael for the most wins in a season, and that has to feel good. Yeah, you know, uh, my Kawasaki got me out to a great start in the second moto. We made a lot of changes from the first and second moto, but, you know, I think, uh, you know, overall I felt pretty good today, except for that first moto, but I felt better that second one and just relaxed. You were downright angry when you come off the track that first moto. Uh, did you have any doubts coming into this second moto? Was it just a bike thing, or, or were you down on yourself? I wasn't down on myself. I was just wondering, like, how bad did I want to win, and I wanted to re win real bad, and I won. Well, you did a great job out there. Uh, what was the key it out there? They said you did a little motor difference with a pipe, but also the front tire. Or was that tire sticking a little bit better for you this one? Yeah, definitely. The, the track was a lot different from track this morning but uh you know i'm telling you my calcite is working awesome i'm ready to go to binghamton it's gonna be fun james looking for that first professional championship and he does it here in millville well stewart is not able to clinch with his eighth overall win but he is right on the cusp the last person with a fighting chance is chad reed today's runner-up and he's down in the winner's circle now with robbie floyd how did it feel in that second moto, Chad? It felt pretty good. Um, just didn't get the, you know, the start I needed. You can't give Bubba a whole shot, obviously. And uh, you know, I tried my hardest. I had a hell of a lot of fun today. You know, I went one, two, and it uh, beats the results I've been getting lately. Were you trying to push the pace, or were you trying to stick at a spot you knew you could do well at? No, you know, I want to win, and uh, just I was just trying to get a good start, and I kind of got pinched off a little bit, so I just kind of had to play it smart and not go down. And you know, this track's extremely rough, and there's a lot of people going everywhere, and, and I just had to bite my time and just uh, try and just pick them off one by one. Well, at least you're coming out of here second in points. There's still a chance at that title. Still a chance. Yeah, you know, there's there's always still a chance, but the you know, championship doesn't bother me. Um, you know, I've tried my my hardest all year, and you know, I've been going up. And down up and down and things just really haven't gone well for me so um you know the championship comes because of you know a mistake above his hand that's you know that's you know good for me but not so good for him so you know i just want to look at it just finish strong in these next two races and uh just put my yamaha troy boost mobiles parts and limited thor smith and dunlop just everybody up there and try and make it happen well, unfortunately for Chad Reed, it's going to take more than one mistake to catch James Stewart. He needs four mistakes in the last four motos, David. But at least he's trying right now. He's making a good race of it. With only two more races left, everybody's trying so much harder to try to win a race before it's too late. That's going to make good racing these last two rounds. Well, Chad Reed, the only rider mathematically left with a chance to keep James Stewart from winning in his rookie season. For Dave Bailey and Cameron Still, I'm Davey Coon saying so long, everyone. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com.